friends, welcome to Garden with Creekside. Today is yet another fun day here at the berm. I know every time we come to the berm and we get something else done, I'm like, oh, it's the most exciting day ever. But it really is very exciting, especially, you know, right? You have your vision for a project, you know what you want it to look like, and then when you actually get to start doing it and implementing it, and you see it come to fruition, it's very exciting, isn't it? That's why we love gardening so much, is like, there's a part of it that is such an instant gratification. So, I know I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but of course, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are, um, Jerry is gonna go ahead and edge the whole entire berm. We are at that point where I really need to know exactly where my lines are for this flower bed, so that way, when I begin to start adding perennials, I know where my depth is, where my curves are, and so forth. So he is getting that done for us right now, which is great. But what we're really gonna do today is we are going to plant a whole section in front of the thundercloud purple plum. The thundercloud purple plum is a beautiful tree that has gorgeous spring flowers. So kind of think of like a cherry tree, right? So the Okamis, the Yoshinos, um, those kinds of cherry trees that bloom in the spring, it will bloom at that same time. But then for the rest of the season, it has beautiful dark purple foliage and it's very heat tolerant. Like it does really well here in the South. And this flower bed of course is in all day sun. Today we are blessed with some clouds and that's another reason why I wanna get this in the ground now is because we're gonna start getting the, the outer bands of Hurricane Nicole coming through this afternoon and then all day tomorrow. So I wanna get my hydrangeas and my butterfly bushes that we're planting today in the ground. That way they get, can take really advantage of this great rain and start to get settled in and get their roots growing. So let me show you exactly um, what we are going to do. We have, of course, that section that I told you about the purple plum on the other side. We are gonna come in and pop in first really quick the new pufferfish hydrangea from proven winners if you remember we were just here the other day where i planted the holly and then the three camellias and i had talked about you know well i might put like a vertigo grass here in the middle for next season that is an annual grass then i started looking at my inventory and i was like oh no i have this gorgeous pufferfish that the folks at Spring Meadow and Proven Winters sent to me in the spring, she needs a new home. Pufferfish will do great here. She gets to be about three to five feet tall. Of course, that's that gorgeous, creamy, white, new panicle hydrangea from Proven Winters. Massive blooms. It is called Pufferfish because it has that very fun little tip on the end of it gorgeous so imagine that filling in eventually the camellias will get to be that three to four feet tall and then four to five wide it'll fill in this space really nicely and as my north poles from in the back as they fill in and get bigger that provides a beautiful evergreen backdrop to the puffer fish so excited about that so we're going to do that that'll be first it won't take us very long and then we're gonna come around on the other side of the berm really quickly so I can show you, I've already placed the hydrangeas and the butterfly bushes because my mama was with me yesterday. And I tell you, that Mimi, she is just a go-getter. So we went ahead and, Brent is checking out the, uh, the old trench. Um, went ahead and placed these. Now we're only gonna do one kind of hydrangea and one kind of butterfly bush. Here in the center, we have all of the new, it's the newest pugster. So starting here, go to the back all the way right there. That is the new pugster pinker. Pugster pinker, um, of course, is that great petite small butterfly bush that will only get to be about maybe a two by two if we're lucky a three by three if it's happy but pinker really has pinker blooms than pugster pink they were very original when they named it but i love it because it truly is like the best name for this plant it has performed magnificently well in my backyard bed and the folks at Ruben Winters Spring Meadow sent us like seven or eight of these, and so it's perfect to fill in this spot. Now on each side of this mass planting of the Pugster Pinker, we have the new Little Lime Punch. 
I did little line, I have two little line punches in the backyard by the patio. And this year they were glorious. They were really nice and stout as far as the, um, the stems. So I know sometimes with Panicle Hydrangeas, people complain that their limbs get real floppy and that when we have rain with the blooms, they just flop over and they just can't hold up. Well, not with Little Lime Punch. It is, if you're familiar with the Little Lime series, this is the newest to the family. And the idea is that Little Lime Punch will give you more intense pink red color. Now, unfortunately for us in the South, it's gonna be really hard for us to get that color. But um, the flowers are just almost like iridescent when they're blooming. It is gonna be a sun to part shade plant only three to five feet tall, I say only, three to five feet tall and wide, it's still a good size plant, um, hardy in zones three to eight. So what we have done is I took some inspiration from the gardens at Spring Meadow and I have planted, or I'm gonna plant, three of them in a diagonal line. So basically what we have is this bed, right, this space with the thundercloud in the middle then we have three little line punches in a diagonal three little line punches on this diagonal and then the center is going to be filled with the pugster pinker i think being this that it's the absolute dead center of the berm it's going to make a huge impact not only are we going to have the flowers from the tree in the spring then that gorgeous foliage all the way through the fall we're going to have beautiful blooms on the hydrangeas and the butterfly bushes for a huge massive part of the season now yes my hydrangeas will go dormant it's interesting that they're still holding on to their leaves they've been outside and they've gone through the freezing temperatures and most of them are still holding on to their leaves really well the butterfly bushes for us are like what I call a semi evergreen, which is kind of like what they are right now. They're not blooming right now. They're not in like full glory, but they will not completely defoliate. That's really rare for us that they will lose all of their leaves in our North Carolina zone 7B climate. So it's gonna be pretty, pretty routine, pretty simple. We're going to get the power planter auger. Then we are going to, of course, use my biotone. I do love the biotone. My plants love the biotone and then yeah, then we'll come back and chit chat with one another. But I think this is going to be a really fun design. It's going to be different having those hydrangeas on in a straight line on a diagonal. It's going to really frame in this area. Uh, super, super fun. So without further ado, let's get started.
Alrighty, my friends. So today's project is complete. We got a puffer fish in the ground, six little lime punches, and I believe it was eight of the Pugster Pinker butterfly bushes. It is going to be a gorgeous spring and summer next year. Cannot wait to see them in full bloom. It is going to be stunning. But even just, you know, here we are in November, right? And the leaves are rapidly falling off the trees and things are dormant. It still looks so nice because we have some structure in these beds and it is really fun to see how it is all turning out. Um, so here we go. We have everybody in the ground. You will notice that especially on my butterfly bushes I tried to plant them pretty high up out of the soil butterfly bushes hate to have wet feet they do not like to have sit in soggy areas they need well draining soil because we have clay soil I went ahead and made sure that we have them about an inch above the soil level Yes, we're going to come back through here with, um, you know, our mulch blend that we are going to use. But if you have problems with butterfly bushes and your butterfly bushes die, especially in the winter, odds are it was because it was too wet and they drowned and they rotted. So whenever you're planting your butterfly bushes, especially if you have like clay soil like what we do, raise them up. They don't like really organically rich soil. It's kind of like the worse soil, the better they do. We will have irrigation in this bed. I'm not sure exactly if we're gonna put these on drip because like I said, once they're established, really, really drought tolerant and they hate to have wet feet. Um, we'll play that by ear. I'm not gonna be keen on like throwing a lot of irrigation on these little right, you know, this little spot right here. Of course, the hydrangeas want to have that nice consistent water. The more you can water them, the faster they grow, the prettier their blooms are. Same thing with our trees. It's just butterfly bushes are one of those plants that just do not like to be fussed over. So that works out actually very well for all of us, right? Um, I want to show you right quick too. Yesterday when I was out here with my um, mama, we went ahead and planted two little pockets, well, nice size pockets, of the Denim and Lace Russian Sage. We have a, had a good number of those plants, so we did um, a nice pocket, obviously, right in here and underneath the Red Sunset Maple, right beside the Thunderhead Pine. And then on the other side of the fence, a nice kind of complementary um, grouping as well. Over here beside the Stellar Ruby Magnolia. So you can see those right there. The Russian Sage is very much like the butterfly bushes. They want it hot. They want it sunny. They want to be neglected. They do not like to have irrigation on them. They, once they're established, man, they are great to go. So that was my thinking, especially putting them up here on the top side of the berm because this gets the really intense, hot, hot afternoon sun. I mean, it bakes right here. So this will be great for them. Again, we'll not put them on irrigation. We will have irrigation, of course, on the tree and it, you know whatever else we put in here, they will not be on irrigation with your denim and lace and your butterfly bushes and your hydrangeas. The best time to prune them is all in late winter going into spring. They all bloom on new growth, even though they're shrubs and perennials, right? They're a little bit different there, but the best time to prune them is for me, like late February, mid to late February, depending on where you are, your calendar time may be different, but just think when winter is breaking and spring is just around the corner, that's when you want to prune them. You, I will not prune my, these butterfly bushes and hydrangeas that I put in today because they were pruned when they got shipped to me. So they are nice and petite. They have been pruned appropriately. So I don't need to prune them this year, but every year after that, 
make sure you prune your hydrangeas that bloom on new growth like your panicles um, your butterfly bushes shape them up give them a little cut back especially the pugsters um, and then your denim your russian sage do the same thing with that nice heavy haircut on them and they will flush back out so 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 excited as i flip around here you're going to be able to see kind of from this perspective got my got my main man right there um, so as we go down the berm, you can see how it is starting to shape up and take um, on some form. Everything's starting to fill in. Just so, so excited about this. The rain that's coming today and tomorrow will be a wonderful thing for the, all of these plants. If they get have any little air pockets, it'll kind of settle the soil. I can come back if I need to rake somebody up, I will do that. So y'all have a great day i will see you on the next video and as always thanks so much for gardening with creekside bye friends